Anthony, thanks for your time. Um, so the book platform is essentially how to uh, build your brand as an individual, but like a personal brand, yeah? Not like a company, but a personal brand. Right, it also touches on uh, building personal brands, so employee brands, uh, because employees are the company, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so how come it's not just the personal brands that employee, like why, what's the, what's the incentive or the advantage around the employees kind of building their own brand within the company? Yeah. So the, the idea around it is to, for, it's because to force companies to become more transparent and better all around, because if you, if you're hiring people that pay attention to personal brands, have meaning, have purpose, uh, then those people have options. And if you have a team full of people that have options, you know you have the right team because they're there for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just believe that uh, people have carried the weight of you know, relying on where they worked as their reputation and their, you know, their resume. And I think it should be the opposite. I think we need to start holding a companies accountable by looking at who they employ and what they, how they support those people. Um, the, if, and any company that doesn't allow their team to actively engage on social media or to have a voice or update their LinkedIn, for instance, um, those companies, I believe you should just quit immediately because they won't be around very long. Mm. Um, like we all go to work with a camera in our hand, you know, eventually the truth will come out. So, mm. so it's, it's a, a bottom up approach in general. And the book was written for normal people, normal people. who are like, am I catching up? <laughs> like, what do I have to do? Yeah. Why am I getting skipped over by the same guy over and over again? It's like, well, it's cause he's the loudest one and you know, he's yeah. probably not the best. Yeah. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. And so that's, that's, that book's also then obviously got quite a lot of synergy with the whole, um, or philosophies with start with why by Simon Sinek. I'm assuming mm -hmm. it's a bit, I mean, I'll read that book also. I do love Simon Sinek, but not for that book, for another book. Yeah. Oh, yeah? What's that book? <laughs> Leaders Eat Last. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So, um, so there's kind of the two aspects then, and the one that I want to dive into more with you today before we get into more like what inspired you to read the book is around coaches and consultants building their authority. And I'll kind of explain my experience on yeah while I was inspired to reach back out to you. But before we get in, into that, what was the, the, um, the, the fire that you know, inspired you to even write this in the first place? So for me, I, we were, um, our previous agency, we were both partners and um, we, it was actually acquired uh, by a corporate com healthcare company. Uh, and I never worked in such a large corporate environment before. And uh, I was just blown away at how the best, you know, our job is to go in and figure out how to rearrange things and make the marketing better and do all this stuff. And um, the most supportive, helpful, useful, even just to the company employees were often the quietest, the least recognized. And I never understood, I didn't understand that because you could see who was doing the work and, um, you know, and not to say that the people that were the loudest weren't, but in most cases that was true. It was just, you know, filling their time and backing it with someone else's, someone else's work. And it just very, it really, really bothered me. <laughs> mm. And so, you know, I started encouraging uh, internal communications and podcasts and letting people get to know each other. The second part uh, was that I started to notice, notice a trend where, uh, the same people were appearing everywhere or I was being asked to speak on topics that I had no business talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was because the people that, that do know are the ones doing the work and they aren't heard from. Mm -hmm. And it's from just a purely, you know, a big picture perspective, let's say looking at the world, if we're only hearing from the same person about seven different, very important topics like science and politics or whatever it is, um, we're not getting the full picture. We're not, we're not, we're getting talking heads and pundits. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to write a book for people who are doing the work and want to help and change their perspective on why this matters a little bit. And an example being, I spoke with this woman 
uh, who she was um, a careerist in the White House. So she had gone through the Clintons and the Bushes and the Obamas and, and she was national security advisor and she quit, um, left the White House recently, but she's, you know, worked through Republicans and Democrats and, and she would say, you know, it's very, it's, it's scary what's being said about uh, like national security or yeah. international security right now, because we're listening to people who don't know what they're talking about. I said, well, why don't you say something? Like, speak up, say something, you know, anyone would want to hear from you. And she said, well, I'm a careerist. I can't, we don't do that. And like, I remember I just like blurted out. I was like, well, then if the world falls apart, it might be your fault. Wow. And then all of a sudden she was, <laughs> she was like, it clicked. And I realized normal people don't want to build brands because they want to be the center of attention. Most people don't want that. They wanted to build brands because they're trying to do a good job and they're getting looked over or passed over or they see that the wrong people are speaking incorrectly sometimes, you know, about topics that they are very important to them. They spent their whole lives building this. So I just um, focused on shifting the narrative from me, 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 become very famous to um, if you don't do this and you don't compete, then you're part of the problem. <laughs> and yeah. And so that approach really resonated with, um, you know, someone who doesn't want to be the center of attention. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's what, what you're discussing now is like, uh, from my, at least my world of, you know, personal development and self-help and coaching, consulting, this kind of thing. So you're obviously aware of like Tony Robbins, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Tony Robbins. so I, I talk about, um, so Dr. John D. Martini, who wrote the foreword to my book, he came into like, like self-help or self martial all this kind of thing through academia. And mm -hmm. then Tony Robbins came into this world of human performance and achievement through sales and marketing and originally through G uh, Jim Rohn, right? Mm -hmm. And those two, in my mind, are a perfect example. Like John D. Martini still built his brand and he was featured on The Secret and a few other things. But yeah. uh, Tony Robbins certainly uses a lot more rhetoric and persuasion and influence and marketing and branding to talk to the masses. Whereas John, who I've talked to an interview many times is like, he will not use rhetoric and persuasion to talk to the animal brain, the hind brain, because he doesn't want uh, those people kind of coming yeah. the programs. Right. So it's just really interesting because when I'm looking through, I was doing some organic outreach to coaches the other day through Facebook. Right. And yeah. when I'm looking at their profiles, it's so hard to be like, what's going on? Because have you, have you read the book Techno Babble? Or like when it talks about like. No, yeah, well, it sounds great. Yeah, so it's, it's when like, <laughs> it's when people use um, language that's unique to them, but the audience gets confused. Mm -hmm. So it's like me being a personal trainer that's talking about keto, and I'm trying to talk to yeah. my audience about ketosis, which is Techno yeah. Babble right? And it confuses them. So a lot of these coaches on their profiles had things like um, awaken the chakra within or um, I'm a spiritual or whatever. And I'm just like, the language that's being used to the audience is so confusing. But these coaches, are uh, coaches, they haven't come from a marketing background, a copywriting background. Well, just even with personal, yeah, you're right. Well, even with personal branding, you know, in any case, the hardest uh, reactions to handle are your own network. So, you know, when you have your friends, your coworkers, your boss, seeing that you're, you know, putting content out and all of a sudden they're coming down and you're like, those, it's not what everyone you don't know thinks. It's what the people you do know think that get to you. And the case that you're talking about with coaches, the problem is that they go through all these courses, they go through all this training and they, and, and uh, academics have the same problem a lot of times, which is, they speak to their, uh, their internal network of people just like them mm. and not to the audience because that's where they're comfortable. It feels safe. Uh, you know, where you look at someone like Elon Musk, who is this, oh, he's just the scientist that knows every kind of science possible and, and businessman and whatever. And he, his language is so simple. And that's why people trust him. The name's a company boring and everyone from, you know what I mean? Like where he just compares a rocket to a shoe and everyone thinks he's a genius. Whereas like a real scientist, another scientist 
doesn't understand why he gets all the attention and, and it's exactly that yeah um, he knows who he's speaking to and it's not the people he was in school with yeah 100 percent. and and that's such a great point and, and your book points on this perfectly because like i said um last time your book does a great job of spilling out the theory but then into some like practical right um and and one thing because uh, because I run Facebook ads myself and for myself as both a coach and my agency, there's so much noise, even more so when we talked last time on the marketplace of like selling a quick get rich quick or just so much like noise. Right. And so I'm like, how do coaches and consultants stand out more now? Because anyone it's e very easy to look, make yourself look like more than you are. Right. Whether it's through a flash website, whether it's whatever. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, how can you stand out more that's harder to do? And in my mind, it's like getting featured or listed on Forbes in these magazines. It's getting onto the speaking circuit. These are the ways I see now that coaches and consultants can more establish themselves as a more uh, certain authority because not everyone's willing to get to Forbes. Not everyone's re willing to get on the yeah. speaking circuit, you know? That's true. And not everyone's willing to look at the human element of it all. Um, I would say that you have a better shot at getting involved in any of these places by going through some of the assistants. So, you know, an intern at the company, people also they go, they go for the wrong center of influence, the wrong um, place. And if you just listen a little bit to the organizations and the people inside of them, you can figure out fairly quickly how to, uh, you know, connect and communicate in a meaningful way to set yourself apart by just connecting to the people around the person you're trying to get to. Um, and I, I, you know, it's, it's just so interesting to see how we've, it is so easy to overlook, you know, for instance, everyone that works with someone like Elon Musk, cause we all want to get to Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. You have no idea that the only people that get to someone or there is their network, right? Especially mm -hmm. when you're famous. And so, um, listening more is a way to do it. Uh, doing your research and being open and honest and and actually you know most people want to be seen uh right like that's all we all want it's not center of attention but to actually be seen and to like if you're an assistant or you're someone that's working and you get a thank you note separately from the person from your from their boss you know how meaningful that is mm. like you could change someone's entire day change your entire week mm. <laughs> it's like acknowledging that we're communicating with other people even if it's not the exact person that you want to get to yeah yeah uh that's been insanely helpful yeah so you so you you mostly built a lot of your um i think you mostly started out on twitter right like as far as building yeah. and following and building your personal brand so i think you've grown that to now i think about 1.7 million right so can you kind of to kind of help future pace people watching this and think like what building a brand can mean and, and for your career, especially because you may not be a coach, but certainly a consultant when it comes uh -huh. to like branding and marketing and advertising things. So how has that helped you building up your Twitter and building up your brand, doing your book, going on these speaking, you know, being invited mm -hmm. to speak? How has that helped you as far as your career and then business goes? Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it's helped me in, in so many ways. Um, the, you know, I started on Twitter because it was fast communication and I, I needed, I needed help with uh, taking on these new projects. So I started a chat to, to talk about it. So people would help me figure out how to run social media campaigns for like really boring companies. Um, and yeah. turns out like I wasn't the only person that worked for a boring company and had that problem. And so we created this community that would just connect and, and, uh, you know, people evolve, companies evolve, the world evolves. And so it went from just talking about marketing to then talking about business, which is now, you know, HR and so on. And it just kind of, it all collided. The other thing is, um, because it was so open and the discussions, you know, evolved as sort of I evolved as a person, uh, I was being presented with opportunities I never would in a million years would have uh, sought out for myself. And so I sort of just took every call uh, and 
showed up and tried to be kind of of service. And I think of it as free college in a way, because you are doing some of the work, you are learning a lot and you are networking endlessly and you can do this online and it actually doesn't cost you anything. Whereas like, you know, you pay someone to go to university to do the same thing to a point. Um, and so you can create your own internship <laughs> in a way, but like I say, volunteer your way to the top, but you can't because that's, those are your people, the ones that, you know, you pick the project, you give some, some of your time up and, and it scales and it grows. Um, when you, you know, there's, there's short plays and there's long plays. And I think I definitely took a long play in my career. Um, and I don't think that that's necessarily what everyone wants or what everyone needs, but I'm a naturally curious person. And so once I get, once I get an idea or I get stuck on something, like it, it's not about the money anymore. Like I don't care. Like I have to get to the end. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's definitely uh, that's been very helpful. But yeah, Twitter, massive networking opportunity, right? Like yeah. you can get to anyone. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Like um, it's amazing where you would be if your mum had not encouraged you to at least ask your company. Oh, just like ask for, uh, um, I know. you know, ask if they will just let you like work abroad. Oh, I can't remember. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, mm -hmm. you know, to keep your job kind of thing, because if it wasn't for your mom's suggestion, who knows, right? Yeah. My mom. And you know, it's funny, uh, because she'll say, see, like, you know, you should, you should listen to me more, uh, because I'm always right. And I say, well, I think that it's the moments that I didn't listen to you or I didn't intend to listen to you that actually helped the most, yeah, yeah. you know, because it has like such a, my backup about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's true. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, um, so, uh, the, the two ways, and again, it's just my perception that, um, I mean, coaches and consultants are then going to have to overcome their own stuff as far as worth or if they wanted to get on the speaking circuit say mm -hmm. um you know the fear of public speaking but let, that aside what when you launched your book and you and you grow your you grew your following on twitter um did these speaking engagements come to you or how was it like what advice and even for myself what advice would you have for coaches and consultants who are wanting to get noticed by whether it be news outlets or invited to conferences or to to, to talk free on a keynote. Right. So I actually submitted a case study. Uh, I submitted a case study to uh, a PubCon, which was, you know, really, it's a really large search uh, conference. And it was the first year they added social media to the mix. And so my case study was about how you could outrank your competitors using Pinterest boards. So, so there was a glitch, you know, they were testing social media at Google and, you know, obviously this evolved and changes at the time. Uh, your Pinterest board never outranked your website, but it could rank alongside it, which would push your competitor off of page one. So when you're in healthcare, insurance, these bigger industries, um, you know, getting your competitor off page one is great. And uh, I, and I found this out because there was a travel uh, Twitter chat, and I noticed that if you looked up budget travel, it, this guy's Twitter chat website were ranking, and I knew that, that was crazy I'm like how is that happening mm. so anyway I took something that I noticed that other you know I think you know it's easy to see it and think it's just in your head or someone else may have talked about it before I don't believe in that if I don't know if I haven't heard it and I notice it I'm just going to assume no one else has talked about it and if they have well now we have a great conversation starter mm. um and and so I wrote this case study um and submitted it to to this conference and then they brought me on and it was terrifying um for sure because i had to now present my uh, case study in front of everyone that does what i do next yeah. to two people who've been doing it longer and it was the same case study you know yeah. um, different approach uh, and then i also made sure that it was seen right so i i reached out to slideshare and other places and i said look i'll be uploading these slides um and if you like them, would you feature them? And then that's where it would happen. It just right. kind of you know, spiraled in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you brought up an interesting point just now. It's, okay. um, you know, one is that, you know, you're sitting next to two people that had been doing it longer. And then there was the other one that I believe in the book, you know, you wrote that you were invited into the boardroom of executives and you didn't kind of realize at what level these people were playing at. 
but there's an interesting book. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was so ashamed. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm on the advisory board of that company, but at the time, yeah. So I got, cause I went and I, I realized immediately that I had made a great, like a big mistake and that I was kind of ashamed. So then I overcompensated to the point where I was like trying to help them out. Cause I felt so guilty kind of. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now I'm on their advisory board five yeah. years so later. Or whatever. Actually give a, <laughs> an interesting story to give uh, a, bit, a little bit more context around that. So you were, how did that start out? So you were invited to give a, like a, a, like a presentation or like, how did that, that event start? Yeah, so I got an email and it was uh, inviting me to host a roundtable about, you know, on digital transformation in specific, specifically social media. And they, the website was like ambiguous, like in order to see who was attending and all of these things, you had to enter a password. And I was working on this nonprofit that I was very engaged in and, and they were going to fly you out, not paid, but they fly you out um, and put you up in this hotel and all this stuff. So I show up a day late because I was engaged in this nonprofit project and I showed up and like, I remember my event was the next day and I hadn't had a chance to attend the other events because I showed up late. And I, and I remember it was in Miami and it was at the Biltmore, I believe. And it was this really nice hotel and they picked me up in like a black car. And I was like, this is so weird. Like, what is this? I was like, these people almost have a ton of money. And, then, you know, uh, and I got to the hotel and I met with the uh, sponsor yeah. who, who was there. And I remember saying something like, well, I don't want to go over anyone's head. And this guy, shamed. he goes, oh, I don't think you will. <laughs> and then the next day he was absolutely right. I had never been in. I mean, he was like the CMO of like everything, you know, 12 executives from these fortune 500 companies. It, it was mind blowing. And I knew I was like, this is the room I want to be in for like ever. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like these guys talk about things, you know, from such a diverse level of experience and um, yeah, but it really could have ended in different, differently for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm for sure. <laughs> yeah. By by the time that you had given your presentation or, or or whatever you kind of you were doing there, was it received well? Yeah, because my so uh, I also found out like the cost to be a sponsor in that room is a hundred thousand dollars. So it was like me and one sponsor and then twelve CMOS, and I'm there for free. So I immediately started to realize that I needed to value this, and all I'm there is to take the topic ask questions and curate the conversation, which is a lot very similar to the Twitter chats, right? But it's the answers, obviously, were just next level and amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was able to work that way. And then the sponsor had been there before, but uh, it, was a, it was the like reality check I needed at the exact right time. Because mm -hmm. I had gotten kind of, not that I was, had a big head, but because um, I had run into some instances being in a very male dominant situation, male dominant industry, but like emerging on the SEO side and then the, the social side is like female dominant, right? And so the SEO guys like didn't want us ha having to work together, but like it was happening. <laughs> yeah. And so I had gotten kind of like my, you know, a little bit, um, I was, I, whatever I was, yeah. I was my t early, you know, mid twenties. And I was just, I needed that reality check. I was like, there's more, yeah. it gets bigger. It gets, it gets, there's always something more interesting. So yeah, of course, now the yeah. reason I was asking if it was received well is because I think there's a lot of coaches and consultants out there that um, are almost like waiting for permission that uh -huh. they can play at a higher level. And I yeah. think unless you're, pushed into it or forced into it or seen it like for example you know I've seen uh, I won't name names but like some big consultants big coaches and I've either yeah. been in the same room or I've been in an experience where they're doing what they do and I'm like huh like I can do it like that or oh, I would have actually taken someone on this path or when yeah. you kind of have those experiences you start to then kind of give you you know have these these situations of like why not me I think that's oh, yeah. part of it Yes. And why not you? And, and also a great question to ask in any situation. The first question I ask in any given situation is who's really in charge. There's um, the hierarchy and, and, you know, titles. So we, we have this idea of who's in charge. 
But then there's the actual power dynamic energy where there's this other kind of person that's in charge or there's another, you know, and you can kind of, every human feels in a room. I don't care how intuitive you are or not. Like you just, we just do. Mm. Um, and that goes actually back to leaders eat last. Uh, mm. There's a great scene about this guy who spoke at an event uh, when he had a title and they were so nice to him and he asked for coffee and they brought him coffee. And then he spoke again the next year. I didn't have this. He, you know, he was like a political job. So he was not no longer that role. Yeah. And he asked for a coffee and they pointed to the coffee pot and he said, the cup was never for me. It was for the position. And so uh -huh. I, that always stuck with me. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, 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 the thing is though, that with branding and at least my perception, you can brand yourself and then it's just more up to your own morals and ethics, but you can brand yourself to be bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that don't even like they're stuck within like morals and judgments and ethics of what branding is, or they don't feel deserving. That's why like that, that behavioral aspect comes into it because it's right. like play at a bigger, they're like waiting for someone to be like, you can do more. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's no situation bigger than than a person, right? There, it just it's not about like one thing being bigger than the other. If you're at the biggest event ever yeah. and a massive earthquake happens, you are no no one. Everyone's equal. Yeah. Right. There's there's this the human element, the the real like raw. You know, we are people. We want to be loved. We want to be able to eat. And, you know, we, we want to live, we want to live a healthy life and everything else is extra. Everything else is formality, formalities and, uh, and where you are today isn't where you're going to be tomorrow. And so, so I always tell people like, uh, you know, I get all these applications. Well, I haven't done this. So I, you know, I haven't done it. I haven't done it. So I can't do it. And I, and I always say, I don't really care what you've done. I'm more concerned with what you're telling me you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, let's go down that path because sometimes someone looking at it for the first time actually has a better perspective than someone who's been doing it for a long time. Mm. And, you know, that it's just, it's a, it is interesting. The stage, the, st the stage, right. Being on a stage and how it changes the dynamic between two people. And it really, it really shouldn't, um, in fact, it definitely, it definitely shouldn't. <laughs> but, but it's amazing. I, I guess you say that because you're talking from your own experience, but yeah. it's amazing how much it does though. And that's why I'm saying that n n neither right nor wrong, but the, the two things that are really hard uh, in a way, one more than the other, but are hard to fake is being featured on like Forbes Entrepreneur Inc. Right. Those kind of yeah. things. And then also being like speaking on stage. Those are two mm -hmm things that are much got a higher barrier to entry. The other things that are easy to fake is like ads, your website, you know? So that's why I'm saying for coaches, consultants, I think that's really almost if they can push and get onto that level and read your book and kind of learn how to do that. Mm. Yeah. They have to say yes before they question why like, you know, try it and fail. Like I would, you know, you won't, because if you're someone who's afraid to say yes in the first place, you're probably very organized and calculated. So just, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Do it. Um, the second thing is uh, you don't have to, to say that you've done something or you haven't done something. I always tell people, if you want to speak somewhere, there's nothing wrong with taking a picture of yourself at an event and saying, this is a great day. It's their fault. They don't do the research to see if you've actually spoken anywhere or not. Like it, but those small little you know, changes is what is your goal? Um, be honest about it. People really appreciate honesty. And as a coach, you should be someone that gets that anyway, because yeah. you're supposed to be connecting with people and helping them connect to that in a higher level. Mm -hmm. And that requires uh, creative thinking. Otherwise, we're just going to keep repeating ourselves over and over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who wants to do yeah. that? Exactly. So, I mean, what is, I mean, not going into too much detail is some of the first step and obviously they can read it in your book, but is some of the first steps to kind of get on the speaking circuit, like Googling, um, you know, speaking events within that niche and then just reaching out to the, the event organizer, or is it trying to leverage a relationship to then get in? Like, what do you find? Yeah. 
first of all, why, what do you want to speak about? Why do you want to do it? If mm -hmm. th those two things have to be very clear. It can't just be because you want to speak because um, a lot of, you know, it's become very popular to speak and uh, it, there, ha there has to be intention behind it and the audience needs to be the most important. So figuring that out. The second is, uh, I call it reverse stalking. So you figure out which events you want to be at and you figure out, okay, who um, is, who are the people organizing these events? And you can find this stuff on like speakerhub.com and there's a bunch of, you know, speaker websites. But what I like to do is I like to go and like maybe follow this person on Twitter and then I'll next day look at their LinkedIn profile. And then the next day I'll, you know, like one of their posts on Twitter then I'll like look at their LinkedIn profile again. And then I might message them on Instagram. <laughs> and by the time you actually get to them, people are like, what do you want? <laughs> Leave me alone, you know? <laughs> so, and they've definitely by the third or fourth, um, you know, poke on social media, they've looked at your profile. So just make sure what they see is exactly what they should see, which yeah. is probably something you talking about related to what you want to speak about. And then you say, look, I'm just a big fan of your event love to get involved and you, you know that's how you stay top of mind um in those cases and once you start i mean it's really make sure you get the photo and um and then it kind of it goes it's just really the first one's the hardest yeah of course and because then yeah you're really meeting connections there but at least being able to profile it and be able to like attach it to your website or attach it places to then i don't know just for whatever it adds just that level of credibility right and it's funny from reading your book, I think it was over a year ago now, I was reading it and I don't know if I said this to you last time, but like I, I was, not you, sounds bad, but I was using what you were teaching in the book on then reaching out to you, right? So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, how do I reach out to Cynthia? I was like, well, she's going to know that I read a book by referencing the book. In the first yep. time, right? That's why I mentioned like Helen Clark, I think is my original message. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, and then I'll that's, like, that's how I got to her. It's not <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, and then I'll message her on a platform that it's not uh, as big as Twitter because maybe she's it's less busy. So again, yeah. it's like, I mean, because you could have ignored it, you could have said no, but it's just like even like from talking to you and interviewing you, who knows? I mean, you already already introduced me to um, Doctor. Uh, yeah, yeah, to Mark, right? Uh -huh. A fantastic interview. Um, so it's just like, yeah, it's not being afraid to do the ask is probably the biggest thing. Uh, and just, but you've got to have a, you've got to have a, a value on wanting to, um, you've got to have a value on having a message that's important to you enough to then want to be seen and want to be out, out there more. If you're too scared of that, then you just won't do it. Yeah. And, and not everything is, is for the sale. Uh, and that's the difference between the long and short game because you know there are times when it's better to make, build a relationship over time while you're supporting a business and then have those relationships seeing you build that business and then there's people you can really help because the more you do it the the level of who you can help and the type of person you're able to help is going to change um, but there's no reason you can't be friends with one side while you while you support another and then as you grow it kind of they collide together yeah totally um yeah so you started you started the company um so you're a partner in another one um and then you started bell ivy mm -hmm. yeah and so that's because I, I watched another interview uh i think it's called business rock stars and, yeah um so I didn't, yeah, so I thought you kind of do help entrepreneurs or coaches because I was one-on-one, -on -one, but you more go into companies and then help the people within those companies. Is that how you, what you specialize in, in the company, in your business? So, yeah, so we, we uh, take a consulting, um, very like agile approach. We go in and we say, okay, what are the company's goals? Um, and we always focus on the people. So on one side, it's personal branding for executives, entrepreneurs, anyone that is uh, directly tied to a business that will benefit from their brand. And the reason we do that is because we uh, are goal focused, not popularity focused. So it's, it's not necessarily, we're not going to help you become a CNN reporter or whatever, you know, it's just not what we're going to do. We will help you become popular enough to a group of VCs and help you raise around. Like that, that's something that we do. And it's a passion side. Um, and 
with that on the, the flip side, we do digital marketing campaigns, which involve personal branding and personnel branding. So we utilize people in content, uh, we utilize them in social media, and we look at the internal workings of your company and say, how can you uh, improve your overall internal perception, right? So communications, culture, et cetera, by trimming, cutting, or rearranging your marketing budget to support employees and team members. So it's a people first digital marketing approach, which anybody who's spent a lot of time in digital marketing will tell you like that's the evolution of it anyway. Um, quite a, quite a tied to the content. Then. <laughs> what is it? Quite a, quite a holistic approach thing. Cause there wouldn't be that many uh, branding or marketing agencies going in with that philosophy. I would have thought. Well, not at all. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, because it, the reason is if you're looking at it from a, like a budget perspective, um, it, it's difficult because you cross into operations, you cross into HR, you cross into market. Like, so it becomes a question of whose budget, whose toes are you stepping on? And two years ago, that was a big deal. That was very hard to navigate. Now those that's shifting. And, you know, we actually recently um, ran a campaign with Walmart, with their employees, a pilot campaign. So store employees are given access to all of these accounts and are being put into the content and being incentivized to do it and increase their salaries, increase their pay. Um, and if a company that employs more people, you know, public company that employs more people than anyone ever uh, is seeing it and, and saying, okay, one of two million, like I'll, I'll trust you with our, our social media media account then it's definitely going we're going to see, see it a lot more mm. which is exciting because i've you know our you know we've spent and our company has spent years years trying to convince a lot of these companies to do it and yeah. um, i actually had one vc guy tell me i should just quit now no one will ever trust their employees and i said you should quit now because you're investing in the wrong companies and I'm not saying I was right. We're not there yet. But. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, it's just but. like, that's why I said a lot, well, what the analogy you used before is very alongside, you know, Simon Sinek's philosophy, which he massively pushes with building the people and build, you know, and like you said, leaders, uh, leaders that eat last. Um, Cause he comes from a, he comes from the background of studying, um, not sociology, anth is it anthropology? What's his Anthropology, book? yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of uh, marketing people do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I actually studied organizational leadership. Right, yeah. right. So, um, have you have you specifically helped from memory, like ah, uh, like a, an, an entrepreneur, like a, a solopreneur, like a coach consultant, and then build their brand before, or mainly through companies? Oh, uh, so yes, I have, but not. Um, in a tradition not in a like traditional way where i'm their sort of coach consultant but i do have people that i've worked with that i'm like you know what the, you're the kind of person that should be training other people and so uh at a certain point when you've been doing things long enough too it's really easy to help certain kinds of people like you can do a lot for someone in a certain space without having to overextend yourself right in that capacity yes um primarily uh primarily women um because it was a couple years ago that they they didn't spend the money it was less women spending the money now after a pandemic and the whole world's upside down like women are are the ones ready to go so it's kind of an interesting shift interesting. um i don't know what it means i just know that i notice it yeah. <laughs> so yes i've helped people um i just haven't charged for it yeah yeah okay cool no because i was um i mentioned a while ago just hasn't happened and maybe in 2021 we're looking at it the two things that i was going to um bring up with you actually is one because it's much easier to obtain is doing a live summit mm -hmm. so this is where um so you, you know russell brunson yeah click funnels uh -huh. so i've just reread his new trilogy trilogies book one you know dot com expert and traffic secret uh -huh. and um there's one strategy on there around running a live summit. So I'm going to run that mm -hmm. in the last quarter of this year. It's right. going to focus on specifically helping coaches and consultants and then inviting people onto this live summit that will be anywhere between 10 to 20 guests. So 
yeah, I'd love to extend that, that invite to you basically and, and have you as the, the, the branding consultant would have a specific interviewer around yeah. going deep into some um, details. But the reason why I asked do you do um, on the back end of helping specifically one-on-one, mm-hmm. whether it's part of your vision or whether, it's want, whether you want to, maybe I can also help facilitate whether that's a little side project that you do to help yeah. that vertical of women building their own personal yeah. brand or whether you're just like, no, I just want to stick with Bell and Ivy. Maybe that's another discussion we can have one time. But um, there's a lot of yeah. solopreneurs, coaches, consultants, women that would really benefit from your experience. Yeah, I will, uh, I will tell you that like, I think it, it's definitely a great opportunity. Um, for me, I will say that there's, when it comes to the one-on-one stuff, uh, I have to re I have to believe that you're that person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm doing? I mean, I have to know I can help you and not that other people don't see that, but I, you know, there's, it, it, it's what's because what I've done doesn't necessarily, if I've done something, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm the greatest coach at it. Yeah. So like figuring out and as you know, you evolve and do all of these things. Um, it, it changes, especially if you're not focused, hyper-focused in one area. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it, it, I could probably write a description out of the kind of person it, that we're, we're looking for is like someone who's gotten their business to a point by themselves. And you're like, how did you do that? Yeah. And now they just need to know how to, to get it to the next place. And um, they're willing and ready to invest in that for so, themselves because usually it means they have to start handing stuff off. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah. I say it even in the sense of like, not that you have, quote unquote, these this perfect framework for a yeah. consultant or a coach, but it's more one, there will be principles that apply across both. But two, it's mm-hmm. more so just like just how someone has to pay, I think they pay ten grand to the you know Gary Vaynerchuk for the four Ds, um, mm-hmm. but it's also accessing his connections and his network, right? So exactly, you should apply for that, right? Hey they apply for that yeah 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 so, so same similar yeah oh similar Definitely. to what you offer yeah, i mean i've i've it's very rare but yeah i'll bring it up and usually the investment part comes when only when it's because you need to get someone used to spending money and like usually the biggest hurdle with these very successful solo entrepreneurs is that they now have to pass on the <laughs> Yeah. They have to pass it on to someone else. They have to trust someone else. And it's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. That's fine. So that's great. You know, we'll see what uh-huh. we kind of like build there. Just, you know, I just trust you as a yeah. space because it's, um, when I want to launch the, um, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, is this um, retreat in Bali. Then we'll just have yes. to figure out what it would be as far as what your fees are for the day or, you know, getting out for a retreat and, um, having okay, I love Bali. Yeah. So you know, I think a lot of people would do it just to go to Bali. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, will because after this pandemic, right? I mean, I can't run it now because there's uh, who, who can travel, so it'd likely be the um, 2021. But first, yeah. I want to kind of run this live summit as an online version, one to kind mm-hmm. of feel the audience. But again, it was going to be bringing on experts that had like either a following of X or a da- email database of, you know, say 50,000 to mm-hmm. at least be able to create a big enough community out of it that can then the next one is going to be like a live retreat uh, offline. Yeah. So that's the idea. Um, so we'll discuss that more anyway. Yeah. You just have to figure out who are the people, like who are the people you want to spend the, the week with, you know? And yeah, then, it, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Ball is cool. So, um, Amazing. We'll up and I'll let you. I'll let you away with your time. Thank you very much for your, for jumping on again. The audio has been much better. For oh, um, for someone that uh, wants to get your book, is Amazon just the best place, or going to your website? Actually, you'll get the best deal at Walmart. Oh, Walmart. Okay. Well, if like- you're living in America, Amazon's the best place if you if you don't live in the U.S. Yes. Um, but yeah, some, I actually question this because when I did the program with them, it was because someone read my book inside the company. And um, 
I was like, how are you selling my book for like, like a quarter of whatever else? Sell for? But they don't, they won't tell you the secret sauce. So. Well, it's funny <laughs> you say that. Cause I was, it was one of those things that I was going to do with you um, as a, uh, the long-term play was that I, with my book, I'll send you the link anyway. I've done a free book funnel. So okay. they will get the book for free. They just pay shipping and handling. And then there's an upsell to my audio book. So like I, uh -huh. so again, you've got to know the numbers, right? The metrics of like you spend mm -hmm. this money on ads. This is what average cart value is. Then upsells to a coaching program. Oh. So, but again, I think you would nail yeah. that base. It's just whether that's um, where you want to play. I get the feeling it's not your, your, not your focus area at the moment, which is also fine. Oh, oh, I mean, I don't know. We'll see, right? Every, everything's changing day to day these days. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I might put something. I'll put something out to you in email, I think. I'd like to follow that up and see it. Because if, for your, because I want to self-published, it was Penguin House, no? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So do you, do you have any control or the rights over, like, how and what you do with the book? Yeah, I have no control. But I, <laughs> I, there, it, so it's to a degree. So the, the book itself, no. Um, like, I couldn't give it away for free for instance i'd have to buy it and then give it away for free and logistically actually is kind of a a weird thing i do i had someone from kindle reach out though um to say that there's a way to do it with them specifically do you uh, i use you know, ingram so, like ingram spot uh ingram for like distribution oh no i didn't no i i don't have any i don't have any say in any of those elements uh, okay. um and actually i don't get i don't get paid um on the audio so you get a one-time fee to do it and then you never get paid from that again yeah, yeah. Okay. actually breaking down publishing is super interesting because i don't you know it's very, know it's so it's it is yeah like please it's such a whole other world I, um, I but, yeah, no, but it's just like yeah. even, even buying your own isbn number yeah. You have control over the book, whereas if you let Amazon go through KDP, do it, then you have also, you have got no control. So there is that whole other world. That the reason why I was asking if you have control because it wasn't published. It was published by Penguin. Uh, it helps with authority, but it's more like I almost wanted to gift you and build a book funnel for you. However, it becomes irrelevant if um, you know because uh, Ingram is a dis distribution channel. Yeah. And if someone comes through and orders a book. I get paid twenty dollars US for shipping and handling, but then I have to right. go to my back end and ship it to them. Yeah. Well, so, I yeah. I think we were talking about next books, and I was like, I don't know if I'll do one, but if I did one, um, I already know it would be can help me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would call. I was well. I wanted what I wanted to name my book is uh, "Stop Making Stupid People Famous" about how normal people should. Should it's come back. It's a fantastic yeah. book. Thanks. Yeah. It's a great title I, as well. Stop making stupid people famous. It's a, the street artist uh, does it. He's an LA street artist, and I actually connected with him, and he agreed to write the foreword and do the cover art, and like let me use it. And I was like, that's amazing. That's but just the idea of you know, it, we it's healthy competition is really good, and I think everyone should use their voice, uh, so that we're not. Just hearing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're really on to I mean, and you've also built the platform to be able to then launch and do a proper launch, like probably this time. I mean, Penguin obviously has their ways of doing it, but um, that's why I'm super grateful to have like Russell Brunson's background because it's like there's methods and, and, and yeah, methodologies and ways to like launch a business, launch a company, launch a product, you know? So, yeah, I think, I think timing's everything too. So, Totally. Um, but who? No one listens to marketers, you know. They... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they just think it's fluff. But I think marketers go; they they naturally have more of a breadth of 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 uh, knowledge. Meaning, they haven't just started one vertical. It's like they have started a little bit of psychology, you know, business uh -huh. and metrics, and you know, it becomes almost like just a holistic business consultant because they cover many areas. Um, especially the digital nomad types like yourself right because you've yeah. had to figure it all out yeah totally and that's, that's the blessing behind you know struggling initially for money because you've had to learn the skills yourself because you can't outsource it 
Whereas if you go straight into a big company and you've had big bud uh-huh. budgets to play with and you've learned Facebook ads that way, sure, that's one way to learn, but you haven't had to really learn what works on a smaller budget or what really works with having to do organic, whatever, because you haven't had the money. Yeah, and then learning what currency is, right? So it's not always money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, leveraging relationships, doing things for free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doing things in trade. Yeah. You, yeah, you know, you, all those really, things. Really, you, yeah, you, I mean, that's how a lot you got to New Zealand, right? Doing social Yeah, media. exactly. Yeah, I have my thousand followers at the time, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. They gave me this whole <laughs> free, they gave me a free trip for yeah. tweets. I was like, I need more of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I get me more of this? Which is yeah. I don't work today, but um, you're probably just getting started within the whole influencer marketing at the time, right? Probably you're oh, at the end of it. Oh yeah, I definitely was just getting started. I mean, I just I worked on the platform side of a social media company, so um, I saw it, what it could do. But it wasn't until I realized that uh, I didn't have to work for what I wanted. Like there was other ways to do it, and you know, when you're trying to figure it out and you're not someone who's like a naturally great employee, um, it becomes kind of, if you don't fit in a box, you can get frustrated. And so to know that there's other ways to live and you're not like crazy for thinking that was an eye opener for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. So. Perfect. Well, thank you very much great. for your, thank you. Um, your time. I would love to, I'm certainly going to reach out and send you a follow-up email. I have a few ideas that I would love to um, put past you anyway. And um, even okay. if it's a collab. Same, actually. It's so. Okay. Well, okay. thank you so much. All right. I look forward to reading your book. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. I'll talk to you about later. All right. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.